Hello and welcome back to the HIV RNA Test Guide Podcast. You know, a lot of you guys count on us for the latest in HIV testing info and access to over 4,500 labs all over the U.S. But today we're kind of looking ahead. We're going to be talking about mRNA vaccines for HIV. It could really change everything in the fight against HIV. Yeah, you've probably heard of mRNA from, you know, the COVID vaccines, <laughs> and now it's being used to fight one of the toughest viruses ever, HIV. That's right. So it seems like perfect timing, especially for our listeners who you know, really care about taking charge of their sexual health. But uh, before we get into why mRNA is so promising, can you remind us why HIV is so hard to vaccinate against in the first place? Well, HIV is really good at evading our immune systems. You see, it mutates so rapidly, meaning it's constantly changing its appearance. Mm -hmm. And to make matters worse, it actually integrates itself into our DNA. So it basically hides in plain sight. Yeah, exactly. I see. So traditional vaccines, which often use a weakened or inactive version of a virus, have had a hard time keeping up with HIV because it's always changing. It's like trying to hit a moving target that's also, you know, wearing a disguise. Right. So that brings us to mRNA. How does this technology take a different approach to making vaccines and what makes it potentially more effective against HIV? Okay, so imagine instead of injecting a weakened virus, you give your cells the instructions to build a piece of the virus themselves. And that's what mRNA vaccines do. They deliver a little piece of genetic code, which is the mRNA that teaches your cells to make a specific protein from the virus. This then triggers your immune system to create a defense. So it's like giving our cells a blueprint to build their own defense against HIV. Precisely. And here's why this is so important for HIV. The first thing is that mRNA vaccines can be adapted very quickly. As HIV mutates, scientists can just tweak that mRNA code to match the changes and create a vaccine that can keep up with the virus's evolution. So it's like a vaccine that can constantly update itself. Exactly. Another good thing is that mRNA vaccines cause a broader immune response by stimulating both antibodies and T cells. So antibodies are like bouncers. They block the virus from getting into your cells. And then T cells act like assassins. They go and hunt down and destroy cells that are already infected. So it's like a two pronged attack, which is something that traditional vaccines haven't been able to do against HIV. Right. And speaking of speed, how does the development timeline for mRNA vaccines compare to traditional methods? I mean, we saw with COVID-19 how quickly mRNA vaccines could be produced. Yeah, that's a great point. Because we're making these mRNA vaccines synthetically, we don't have to spend all that time growing and weakening viruses in a lab. So researchers can test and change mRNA vaccines much faster, and that could potentially shorten the time it takes to get a safe and effective HIV vaccine to the public. That's great to hear. It all sounds incredibly promising, but I know our listeners are probably wondering about like real world progress. Where do things stand right now with the research and trials for an mRNA HIV vaccine? Are we talking years, decades away? Well, there's a lot of excitement around two mRNA HIV vaccine candidates by Moderna mRNA 1644 and mRNA 1N74. Both of these have already entered human trials, which is a really big step forward. Human trials, wow. That's a huge leap from the lab to the real world. Can you explain what these trials involve and what the researchers are hoping to find? Well, the early trials are mainly focused on safety. You know, they're checking to see if there are any bad reactions to the vaccine, but they're also looking at the immune response. They're looking for signs that the vaccine is making the body produce antibodies and T cells, those great defenders we talked about. So they're basically seeing how well the vaccine is teaching the body to fight off HIV. Exactly. And they're also looking at how broad the immune response is. HIV has a lot of different strains, you know, so they want to see if the vaccine will protect against multiple strains, not just one or two. That's really important, especially because HIV mutates so much. Mm. But with all this testing, what's a realistic timeline? What's a realistic timeline? When could we actually see an mRNA HIV vaccine that's available to everyone? It's always hard to say for sure in medical research, but based on the early data and the fact that mRNA technology works so fast, some scientists think we could have a vaccine that works in the next decade. A decade might seem like a long time, but considering how long we've been fighting HIV, it's a pretty short time to develop a vaccine for such a complex virus. It definitely gives us hope. And while these trials are going on, are there any key developments or findings that you think would be interesting for our listeners? Well, one exciting area of research is focusing on something called broadly neutralizing antibodies. We call them BNABs for short. BNABs? Yeah, these are special antibodies that can target multiple strains of HIV, even ones that have mutated a lot. So instead of trying to keep up with every single mutation, these BNABs could be like a universal defense against HIV. Exactly. Researchers are trying to figure out how to use these BNABs in mRNA vaccines to create a stronger and longer lasting immune response. 
They're also looking at how to deliver the mRNA vaccines better so they reach the right cells in the body and really trigger a strong immune reaction. So there's a lot of innovation happening to make these vaccines even better. But let's say we do actually get an effective mRNA HIV vaccine. Are there any challenges we should be thinking about now? Of course. One big challenge will be making sure everyone around the world has access to the vaccine. We need to learn from what happened with other important medicines and vaccines where some people couldn't get them, and that led to unfair health outcomes. Yeah, you're right. It's not enough to just develop a great vaccine. We have to make sure everyone who needs it can get it no matter where they live or how much money they have. Exactly. We need to start planning now for things like how to make enough vaccines, how to get them to people, and how to make them affordable. We don't want an HIV vaccine to only be available to a few people. It should be a tool for everyone. And this brings up something important for our listeners. HIV prevention isn't just about vaccines, right? Mm -hmm. There are other things people can do right now to protect themselves and their partners. Absolutely. While we're waiting for a vaccine, we can't forget about the tools we already have. Condoms are still very effective at preventing HIV transmission. And for people who might be at a higher risk, there's pre-EP, which is a daily medication that can significantly lower the chances of getting HIV. And we also have effective treatments for people who already have HIV. With early diagnosis and treatment, people with HIV can live long, healthy lives and reduce their viral load to the point where they can't transmit the virus to others. So there are a lot of options for prevention and treatment. And that reminds me of something we talked about at the beginning, the importance of HIV testing. A lot of our listeners use HIV RNA test guide to find testing resources. And I think it's important to say again that early detection is really crucial. I agree completely. If people know they have HIV early, they can start treatment sooner and that can make a huge difference for their health and help stop the virus from spreading. That's why having access to reliable testing is so important. And that's where HIV RNA test guide comes in, connecting people with thousands of testing labs all across the US. It's all about giving people knowledge and options. The more we know about HIV and the tools we have to prevent and treat it, the better we can make decisions about our health and the health of our communities. Well said. And as the research on mRNA vaccines continues, I'm sure there'll be even more to learn and talk about in the years to come. But before we finish up, I wanna ask you about the bigger implications of this technology. If an mRNA HIV vaccine is successful, what other infectious diseases could it help us fight? That's the question that keeps a lot of scientists like me really excited. The possibilities are almost endless. It's like we've opened the door to a whole new way of developing vaccines. There's already research on mRNA vaccines for things like the flu, malaria, Zika, and even some types of cancer. It's like science fiction coming true. It really is an amazing time to be working in this field. And even though there will be challenges, the potential for mRNA technology to change global health is huge. It really makes you wonder what other amazing discoveries are coming. Right, and it just shows how important it is to stay informed and keep up with these new developments. Definitely. And for our listeners who depend on HIV RNA test guide for accurate testing information, I hope this deep dive has shown you how research is always moving forward and giving us new hope for prevention. It's all about having the knowledge to take control of your own health. And speaking of taking action, I want to remind our listeners that HIV RNA test guide can connect you with over 4,500 testing labs all over the country. It's fast, it's affordable, and it's confidential, so it's never been easier to know your status. Knowing your status is the first step in taking control of your sexual health. Whether you're thinking about pri ep or want to talk to your doctor about prevention or treatment, HIV RNA Test Guide is here to help. That's such an important point. Thank you for bringing that up. Mm -hmm. And thank you for joining us today for this deep dive into mRNA vaccines and how they could change the future of HIV prevention. It's been a really informative conversation. I've enjoyed it too. It's really inspiring to see so many dedicated and talented researchers working hard to find a cure for HIV. To all our listeners, we encourage you to stay curious, stay informed, and stay hopeful. The fight against HIV isn't over, but with new technologies like mRNA vaccines, we're getting closer to a brighter future. Until next time, take care. And stay